Hi, I'm Rob from Dombroco and I'm on the spot. I think the coolest piece of band merch I've ever owned uh, is probably my uh, Rage Against the Machine hoodie. Um, I don't know if it's legit, but someone gave it to me and told me they got it at a raid show in the UK and it was a present and I believe them. Who knows, there was, you know, it could have been a knockoff piece because I remember, you know, back when I was a kid, there was definitely like a lot of stuff going around. Camden Market was a place where you'd go and, uh, and, and you know, buy loads of cool t-shirts and being, um, you know, I think eight or nine, I didn't really understand about uh, fake merch, but I believed it was legit Rage Against the Machine hoodie, uh, Battle of Los Angeles, from a show they did in the UK and London, uh, and then they stopped playing shows. So I keep that hoodie and it's a treasured memory believing it's real. I'm probably committing the biggest fashion faux pas I've ever made right now. I don't really know what I'm wearing. Uh, Warp Tour brings out some, some interesting fashion choices as you, as you run out of clothes and things need getting washed. Uh, but I think the worst, the worst thing we've ever done as a, as a band is definitely one of our early shows. We thought it would be, uh, be cool to wear uh, matching Adidas uh, yeah, tracksuit bottoms and we all happened to have uh, Adidas trainers um, at the time and um, polo shirts. Uh, yeah, it's like button up polo shirts, but like different colors, slightly different colors. But all the tracks were the same. It was just like really uncomfortable, really hot, looked terrible. We just, it, it, was, it was a really bad move. It took us, I think, three shows to realize um, that was not the way forward. To break down the outfit, I've, yeah, the hot dog hat. I guess this is the, uh, the main focal point of the outfit. Uh, a fan. Uh, got me this from from Walmart so I don't know if you can still get it in Walmart on the last tour we did uh, back in April um, yeah someone came with this hat to a show and it was a really nice gift and um, I've been wearing it ever since um, my shades I got in New York um, after a show there um, at one of the kind of uh, covered markets t-shirt I got from Warped Tour um, we did the service day uh, where we went and uh, cleaned up a load of rubbish off Ventura Beach and our reward for a hard day's work was this sick crew t-shirt. Um, my Broco basketball shorts, these uh, we just got for this tour, which were pretty cool. We've never had shorts before uh, in our merch, so I was kind of excited about these. Uh, my Van socks, again, Vans Warped Tour staple, and yeah, some, uh, some some Nike trainers for comfort. S sounds really bad having a second favorite band, but um, I think my second favorite band is probably Deftones. Yeah, but I love Deftones. It sounds horrible saying it's your second favorite band. They're amazing. Um, no, screw it. They're my first favorite. Oh, shh, that is a really good question. 80s action or 90s comedy? Um, I think I've got to go 80s action. 80s action still holds up to this. You watch an 80s action movie now and they still very much hold up to this day. You can tell they're dated. They're obviously a little bit retro, pretty kind of cheesy at some points, um, but there's something so just raw and dumb, stupid, fun about them. Um, 90s comedy, you watch some of them back and you they're not as good as you remember them. A lot of them, you think, wow, like, was my sense of humor really bad back then? Or was everyone's sense of humor? Some of them do stand the test of time, but yeah, a lot have not aged as well. Uh, so I go A comedy. Tinder. Tinder has changed the world. I don't understand. Um, actually, that's probably not true. Um, I'd say GPS is, is, is the biggest thing. I think that the way people adapt that into their modern lives uh, modern lives, sorry. Probably, probably Uber is actually the biggest thing. It's crazy how such a simple idea, like you know, being able to call a taxi, but from anywhere, just on your phone. Um, it's almost crazy that, that 
wasn't an idea kind of years before as soon as people uh, discovered just having a direct connection to your phones with satellite but yeah the amount of people I don't I don't use tinder personally um, but the amount of people who use tinder and meet people meet their girlfriends and how it's like an accepted um, you know dating thing now um, it's crazy but it's just it's it's part of the modern world so that always makes me laugh every time I see people on that the show playing with 30 seconds to Mars was just insane um, the show was was ridiculous the crowd were amazing um, getting to meet those guys was really cool as well we met them briefly before the show and uh, they said they love my sunglasses which was really nice of them so yeah cheers Jared $17 hot chocolate definitely I'm a I'm a I'm a big hot chocolate guy um, we did have Don Coco yeah um, I'm I'm one of the few members of my band who, who don't doesn't drink a lot of coffee. Uh, the other guys uh, are absolute coffee fiends. So if we're ever stopping at a Starbucks or something and uh, they're fueling up, I'm, I'm the hot chocolate guy. Um, sushi as well, I do love, but yeah, truck stop sushi is, is, is not the one. I think you need to, you need to, yeah, sort of up your game if you're, if you're eating sushi. So yeah, bring me all the hot chocolate, I love it. Yeah, it's probably, um, from, from the song technology, um, I need to put all of me out there, hope that someone cares, I'm not the only one left right, which is a line from the middle eight, which kind of, that kind of sums up the more emotional tone, I guess, of the song, you know. The song is quite a fun song technology. Um, you know, it's a, it's a look at, at the, the world we live in, uh, in that song specifically, social media, changing how you feel about your friends and how they react in regards to social media but i think that feeling of of having to to to, to put yourself out there to the world at all times not feeling comfortable with that and the, just that kind of unsettling feeling of of your place in the world and feeling like you know you're the only one thinking those things at that point as a general theme probably sums up quite a few songs in the album that's a really deep question um, and something I've thought a lot about. I think I'd rather fight zombies. Um, aliens, you might be able to get away, you know, from the, from the uh, you know, operating table or canister or, you know, tube, whatever they've got you in, doing their weird, you know, intrusive operations on you. Uh, but where are you gonna go? If you've been abducted up to space, you know, you're not gonna, you escape the spaceship, you're sucked into the vacuum of space and you can't breathe. Zombies, at least you're here on Earth. Um, I've seen enough episodes of The Walking Dead um, to, to know the best, best spots to scavenge for weapons and food. Um, got a good few group of mates. I think we could, you know, work together as a team, have each other's back. So yeah, I, 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 I try my luck with the zombies first, definitely. I'd love every time I die to cover a Don Broker song. I think that would be really interesting. Um, I guess as a song, you probably want to pick something that's most unlike Every Time I Die. So something maybe a bit softer from our repertoire. We've got a song called Keep On Pushing, which is uh, one of uh, our more kind of soulful tracks. So that would be, yeah, that would be really exciting. Every Time I Die, make it happen. I think people, sometimes people think we're like, uh, like constantly like just Larry lads who are always like boozing, partying, getting up to trouble, you know, messing around. Like we're, we're a lot more boring than that. Um, we, I think maybe because we've got a few songs that kind of poke fun at, at, uh, at that culture while, you know, still dipping our toe in it and enjoying it from time to time. I think if you get to know us, we're, we're, we're probably, a lot more, uh, a lot more kind of normal and geeky than you'd expect. I mean, I'm a massive Green Lantern fan. Who'd have thought it? Before this chat, we were really getting getting deep in, uh, yeah, the Sinistro Core and the, the Black Lanterns. So yeah, you know, we're um, yeah, we're there's many levels to us. I think. Well, we we just massive geeks basically. Um, yeah, I, I'm a tea man. I love my English breakfast tea, my herbal teas, K2 
chamomile, fruity infusions, tea, get into me, I love it. Um, the rest of the guys, they're all big cotton. Like Simon, Simon is kind of reaching that, that level of, of uh, yeah, coffee connoisseur where he can't go to a normal coffee shop and buy a coffee because he's disappointed. Like he, he's got his own like Peli case on tour where every morning he'll wake up and I don't know what he does. It's like this test tube and pour over coffee. And what's the other thing he's got? A, um, oh, it's this weird little construction thing that he's, he's spent a fortune on, yeah, on, on cof coffee um, yeah, apparatus. And uh, yeah, he goes to any other shop. He's normally disappointed and rushes back to the bus to uh, make his own coffee, which he claims he can do better. So the rest of the guys will be coffee, but yeah, I'm too.